gap counting in the S model and reconnecting the S model to the prime gap distributions. We ended the last discussion showing the S model has a nice constructive way to count gaps between members. We also showed we needed to scale our counts to reconcile counting with the prime number theorem. Now we'll walk through the first few iterations of the model in detail and then try to help it, uh, explore it. Before we start, let's begin with a question. Someone gives you a data file of a particular iteration of the S model but forgot which M it was. You also only have the first few members which may include residuals. Can you deduce M? Well, besides the trivial first member 1, we know the next non-trivial member must be the next prime. And the first composite must be our next prime squared, and everything less than that must be prime. The curious case of S0, chapter M equals 0, the genesis of the primes. In the beginning, before the first big bang of the composite killing machine, the primes were almost without form. We consider the first and always ignored Z1, uh, which generates the integers. Not particularly instructive, it would seem, but here it's important. The first few rows of S, S0 are as follows. Note the gaps are 1, as expected, and successive gaps grow by 1, where we've added residuals to make the form more apparent. We don't even have multiplication yet, only addition by successor. But notice our average gap equals 1, our successor. Addition by successor will be a recurring theme, except that after m equals 0, we will begin to see our notion of successor must evolve to a random operator. Hint, our average gap. But notice that S0 already meets the criteria of having been sieved. We have our trivial member 1, our next prime is 2, that squared is 4, and everything less than that is prime. That is, the naturals were born sieved by 1. Thus we have a wonderful constructive argument to explain why the first primes are so closely spaced, 2 and 3, and why 2 is even a prime. We also argue that 1 is a prime, but it is the zeroth prime completely degenerate in multiplication. It is the ghost in the machine. The fact it is so degenerate is why the first additive minor does not exist. Since we wind up subtracting uh, 1 from 1, we get 0, and it's not a member. Now let's look at deeper rows and do some counting. Notice, since our next prime is equal to 2, and it subtract uh, 2 is 0, we expect from this, uh, CKM to absorb everything. That is, by construction, we'll never see gaps of 1 again. So from now on, gaps can only be even and at least 2 or larger. S1, the death of a subring. Following our recipe for construction, we expand to the next primordial boundary, subtract our next prime times 2 of our current members, and we get the a trivial set. Um, notice uh, the average gap is equal to 2 and the residual class generates the, the odd positive integers. Completely un uninformative. The expansion coalescence mechanism forever now bans gaps of unit length and odd gaps in general. The first few rows of S1 and its residuals are as follows. This generates the set of the odd integers, and strangely, it's as degenerate as S1, since membership remains this artificial, trivial one. Notice that the notice the coalescence rows. The next new gap formation must be a four. We, a restatement of twins only occur from expansion, never coalescence. We can't make twins again. Those twins were created in the first big bang of the composite killing machine and will only ever be recreated by expansion, never from coalescence. This happens because we lost our unit gaps. Twins will now act as the smallest atomic building blocks of future gap formation. Also note 
the ring SM is the direct product of its prime factors, which is very trivial in our case, and we've lost our primitive member. Everything had to start from somewhere, yet we lose this primal building block. The ghost in the machine also acted as a bootstrap before it died. We can't use it for multiplication, but it generated the more complex gap structures that we see. Are there perhaps other examples in nature where a bootstrap field disappears and leaves the universe as we know it? S2 and the birth of deep gap structure. Following our constructive recipe, uh, we see now that we have the birth of our gap palindrome, albeit the empty one. But our pivotal cousin and capping twin are now in place. Also notice we finally have some structure. The first few rows of S2 with residuals as follows. Notice the smallest gap that can now be formed from coalescence now is 6. Not only have we lost twins, but cousins now become atomic building blocks. They just can't be created from coalescence again. Nothing smaller than 6. We're also in a position to apply the primordial algebra we developed earlier. In fact, for single gaps, it began when m equals 1. That's when the birth of our uh, second minor primordial machinery begins. That is, it predicted a single surviving member from uh, the previous iteration to the current one. And since there's only a single gap, a twin, a single copy survived. In fact, trivial analysis shows from now on the count of twin gaps in iteration M de denoted by capital T for type count is our second minor primordial. This is also true for cousin gaps. The second minor primordial is counting individual gap slots on the machine of the expansion coalescence S model. Uh, twins just happen to fill that first slot, as do cousins. Since the next prime is 5, and 5 minus 1 is 4, we, all re we know already all tuples of length up to 4 will have at least a single copy survive into the next model. Also note from coalescence, the next smallest new gaps that can be generated are sexies, as we said. We're also in a position to count gap pairs, uh, since the root pair machinery is now active. That is, uh, our third minor primordial now makes sense. It's one. And it's occupied by a single pair, four, two, and two, four. Until now, counting is easy, because we've been lucky to deal with atoms created at the birth of the primes. Just birth order luck. Larger gaps in tuple will almost always have an algebraic crosstalk, which we need to handle with a remarkably simple linear algebra. Let's construct a matrix of our primordials. For shorthand, we call it the Oriole matrix, or OM, an old Sanskrit term chanted at the start of meditating the perfection of the universe. Let OM of MR be an R plus 1 by R plus 1 matrix, starting from some M naught where the members ohm of IJ are um, various primordial minors and offsets. That is, each column is a particular primordial minor at some index, and su successive columns are deeper primordial minors, with rows representing increasing indexes. And here we have an example. We're starting at some m naught, and it's r uh, going up by r in either direction. Also, let t of s at some m and r be a sequence s of interest uh, of gaps, such that we form a vector of length r plus 1, where each member is the count in some particular model. That is, we're going to walk through at some m naught, pick out a sequence, and count how many we have. And then we'll count how many we have in the next iteration, and the next iteration, and so on. For each such, such sequence, by construction, there exists a sequence of rational numbers, Cs, such that ohm times Cs is equal to our type count. For every m greater than or equal to our start condition. 
Or, given the type counts, we can invert this to get our constants. That is, ohm inverse times how many we counted gives us our constants back, as long as we do our counting greater than our start condition. Finally, once we have our counts, or once we have our constants, then we can put it through our primordial uh, matrix and we get a simple algebraic form and it tells us our counts forevermore. We'll see this in action when we analyze all possible gaps and spans of sexes when we examine S3. But let's take another small detour to ask where this counting is valid among the primes. The counts are true by construction everywhere in the S model. However, the model is actually dominated by composites. Even if we can't know its index, we can know where the first composite rests. It's our next prime squared. So the short answer is we're looking at x less than our next prime squared. So here we have S3 and the explosion of complexity. Following our construction, we expand to the next primordial boundary. We subtract 5 times two, our two previous members, and we get our eight expected members. And we get our first non-empty palindrome. Notice our counting works out perfectly. We're counting our twins exactly, our cousins, and our counts of 4 and 2 and 2 and 4. And we can use our algebra to count gaps of 6. We note that starting at m equals 2, where virtual sexies were created by the 4, 2 and 2, 4s, our counts were 0 and 2. That is, at m equals 2, we had no zero counts of 6. At m equals 3, we had two counts of 6. Constructing our matrix as follows, we then invert it, multiply it by our type counts, and we get that the type count of 6 is twice the second minor primordial minus twice the third minor primordial for all m greater than 2. For fun, we probe the S model through m equals 11 or the prime of 31, using only an available ASUS netbook and a five-year-old model at that. But the algorithms are so efficient, the work was actually easy and accessible to such a small platform. Type count terms grow rather quickly, so we'll just provide the coefficients here. Uh, but here are some results. We go, we'll show you up to 20, but we calculated to 32. Note how they're growing. Uh, love to talk more about this, but we have to move on. The rest get too long to show, but just to show off, here we have 32. We computed a great deal of tuples of 2 and larger. Uh, for example, here we have this complex one, which goes as the seventh minor primordial. Uh, also note, because the algebraic form has a single term in it, this sequence is an atom, is atomic. That's the definition of atomic, has a single algebraic term. So by construction, every tuple which exists of length as large as you wish occurs infinitely often. Once you find one example, every other tuple, if it exists, will be found a primordial distance away. A pretty nice constructive proof of the Green-Tau theorem.